Friendly hellos and welcome to the first allocator call taking place on April 30th. Let's take a look at what we have on the agenda. We're going to start off with an update on the Phil Dev Summit. It's coming up in July in Brussels. Make sure that you mark your calendars and just kind of give you a sneak preview on what's coming. Followed by an update on the RFA. So if you're not familiar with this, we'll talk about how it impacts allocators and how it's designed to come on board to make the program a little bit better. We have updates on the smart contract that's coming down. We also have updates on data cap removal, on how that process works. We have updates from Fiddle on tooling and what updates they're doing to improve the system for us. And we'll wrap up the call with FAQs. These are, how does the DDO work? This came through over Slack. And then an update on the Slingshot program that was a carryover question from last time. As always, if there's topics you'd like to bring up or discuss, feel free to show a hand in the chat and we'll get to you or save time for the end and we'll bring up anything that you may need. So with that as a friendly reminder, if you're curious what time these calls start, you can always grab this calendar link that's shared in Slack, and it will add to your calendar so you can follow these along. Today's April 30th, and the next call will be taking place on 14 May. So with that, let's take a look at RFA. I'll turn the floor over. I think, Galen, you wanted to speak to this one, or KZ or Will, would this be yours? I got this one. Um, yeah. Sorry. I must have put my slides out of order for the Dev Summit. I apologize. Um, I also have a link right here to the Dev Summit that I just found as we were talking. So sorry for a little bit of chaos. Um, RFA, so a request for allocators. Um, last year in November, when we kicked off this new allocator election cycle, we had been talking about meta allocators and sort of different types of you know, notaries and allocators as various market makers or automated engines. And in the election cycle, we saw a lot of teams raising their hand and saying they wanted to sort of do things really similar to how the large data set process had been functioning, um, kind of very similar to the either the existing LDN pathway with manual diligence um, or some people adding on some some different new tooling or structures around um, how they could support encrypted data. And we're seeing some good innovations there. We're, the Fiddle team is working you know, really hard at making that tooling. We're investing in smart contracts to see how we can make that more automated and more efficient. Um, we're excited to keep investing in that work. We got a handful of allocators that were doing different kinds of automated or market-based systems, um, some that were sort of market engines where they would automatically shard the data and match it um, to storage providers without the client needing to select them. Um, we saw some different fee-based systems, but we think there's a lot of room for more allocators in these other pathways. So what we really, we brainstormed for a while and we came up with a couple different ideas. We're gonna be releasing um, some documentation, I think in some blog posts and in some readme files with some of these ideas. Uh, but as we start to transition to rolling applications, we're gonna be releasing a new rubric for that. Another piece of feedback that we got in looking at the selection cycle was the rubric really kind of kept a lot of the status quo. So a lot of the questions on the rubric ended up kind of forcing people to look like similar allocators in, in order to feel like they could be successful. So we're going to be revising that rubric really with an eye for how can we increase some of the innovation in this space? How can we take um, more of these teams that want to be onboarding real quality data to Filecoin and leverage some different kinds of tooling or different kinds of fee structures? Maybe it's staking, maybe it's other third-party OAuth systems but we wanna design the rubric to really encourage and support that. And in doing so, when we move to this rolling application cycle, we were gonna be giving more priority to those teams that are applying to do things either from this chosen list of RFAs or saying, I have a proposal for you know, this other novel system, something that doesn't already exist in the community of allocators. Um, so as you're thinking about what's working in your pathway, tweaks that you want to make, maybe applying for a second pathway. Again, there is no uh, limit on the number of pathways that an organization could run. 
like using Fiddle as an example, they have two different pathways. Those are specialized and slightly different, uh, but there can be an economy of scale in running multiple of these specialized pathways. As we do this, we're thinking about how could we include some kind of like retroactive funding um, for teams that are building these different tools. What would that funding structure look like? Uh, we're thinking about some bounties or some grants. There's also been a lot of interest in the community recently around retro PGF, retro public goods funding. Um, there have been various talks on this at Funding the Commons. Um, this is something that a couple of different teams at PL are looking at. So I, I encourage you to go track that down if you're not aware of what's happening with retro PGF um, and see if that's something that you could be applying for in other projects that you're doing in this ecosystem. But that may be another place where we leverage um, getting some additional funding for this project. So I put in there a couple different examples. Like I said, more information is going to be coming soon. Just wanted to get this out in front of the community now because I know there's some ecosystem partners that are thinking about um, either reapplying or applying for another pathway. And I just wanted to let everybody know that we are going to be making some modifications. So don't see any um, hands or questions in the chat. Gonna pause here for just a few seconds and see if there are any questions on this request for allocators that we're going to be releasing. Also, Will, uh, KZ, Kray, if there were any other parts on this uh, that I missed, feel free to jump in. I think that's a good coverage of it. Um, but I think this is, you know, a the, the basic thing here is to expect that as we move to rolling applications, or at least what, I, what I've heard and what I think is, is coming, is that it won't be the same rubric that happened uh, at the beginning of the year. So there will be some different questions, and there will be, um, I think, one of the things here is, you know, here's some ideas that, that some people have tried to brainstorm, but it'll be uh, as much sort of that going back to that goal of allocators, which is um, asking you to propose I want to build this, and I think the right way to evaluate the success of this effort is this. So you're you're sort of asked to propose, I think, to some extent, how do you think success for a given allocator path uh, that that may be a new path uh, should be judged? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So new new application structure, new kind of question format, as well as a new rubric. Um, we want to increase the efficiency of how long it takes for us to assess those and post scores and capture all that information and onboard people. Um, as people have seen, it takes a long time on the back end, or maybe maybe you don't know, but the delay from going from accepting applications to onboarding people is, is because there's a lot of work that um, K. Ray and myself and you know other people from the Fiddle team have done to review these applications. So we want to make that process more efficient for ourselves as well. And yes, we'll brought up another point that we've been talking about, which is this idea of in the application, we want to be asking allocators to also help us understand how they are thinking about sort of their evaluation, their compliance. How are they going to report out how they're successful? Um, things like that. So awesome. Thank you. Sorry for getting the slides out of order, Kay Ray. No worries. I think that was my bad on changing it. But Galen, while I've got you... Unmuted, do you want to kind of give us a lead into the Phil Summit coming up in July? Yeah, totally. So this is going to be Phil Dev Summit number four. Uh, I think the website, which I posted in chat, um, went live just recently because it wasn't there. <laughs> Pretty sure it wasn't there last week when I looked. Um, so we might be scooping that from someone else's announcement. But um, we've had uh, uh, Singapore, Iceland, and Denver. Um, they've all been really great at getting you know the focus on developers and sort of different more narrowly scoped tracks with sessions that are really meant to be more kind of hacky um workshoppy you know less of a huge presentation conference and more of a you know let's learn about some of the problems we're facing and let's brainstorm solutions let's let's design some solutions to these things as we go so with that, with Field Dev Summit number four, um, the Gov team and the Fiddle team, you know, in looking at calendars and just where we're at, we're talking about supporting all these different tracks. So rather than running our own full day or half day 
track it's all exclusive to filecoin plus what we're going to do this go around to try something different is we're going to do a talk in pretty much every track that's happening and that way we want to spread ourselves out into these other tracks and we want to learn from some of the other people um, that maybe wouldn't opt into a filecoin plus track in its entirety so if you're a developer if you're somebody building in this ecosystem um eth brussels is the other main event at Dev Summit backs up to ETH Brussels. Um, there's also going to be, I think, some Lab Week programming um, as well as um, probably some other Filecoin Foundation uh, programming. Not positive on all of that. I'm mostly just staying focused on the Dev Summit. So it'll be July 9th to the 11th in Brussels. Historically, some amounts of this have been kind of you know, recorded and posted later, um, but it's really about getting people in the room more so than it is about uh, adding a bunch of virtual attendees. So if you can make it, that would be fantastic. I think that registration is now live with locations and schedule. Um, some additional schedule information I'm sure will evolve over time, but yep. So there's some ticket information and early bird tickets still available. Um, so. That's a uh, field dev summit number four update. Um, I'll be there for part of it. Pretty sure some other people on this call will be there as well. Looking forward to it. Would be a great event. Be nice. Sweet. Well, Will KZ, I think we have some eager ears for the smart contract updates. You want to kind of walk us through? Do you want me to go first, Casey? Sure, go ahead. Sure. Um, so one of the projects that Fiddle um, is helping um, push on um, uh, that that is open source. So you're welcome to visit the GitHub repo and follow along as we as we build this. Um, is to look at how we can move more of the data cap process into smart contracts, and the goal uh, here is to take some of the um, various parts of process that have currently um, involved humans in the loop, taking actions, uh, especially the ones that involve humans having to do manual actions with a ledger um, that, that just is a high overhead, and seeing if we can get more of those automated. The, the first one here is really about uh, responding to a need that we've heard a bunch of times around um, both clients and allocators and so forth wanting um, more confidence that data cap will flow um, smoothly. So right now, when you think about the, the flow that you're experiencing to your allocators, you'll get something like five pips and you'll spend 75% of it to clients. And then you'll reapply for a top up from rookie holders. And one of the issues we have is that that's um, a single point of failure, I guess, which is we've got a lot of allocators who are all Ryan, like rolling up to this one uh, entity of rookie holders to, and, and this one governance team to do that review. And the way that Phil Plus has been described in this allocator structure um, really for quite a while um, is, is more as a tree where it doesn't need to be um, a single level that, that you could imagine that there are um, allocators and allocator pathways where what the thesis of that allocator pathway is, is that it's going to reallocate to other uh, sub allocators. And we've, we sort of have done this through uh, various incarnations called them um, the, you know, the different LDN notaries um, were all a way to take this one sort of pathway around um, large open data sets and uh, allow lots of people to act as that approval uh, structure. So the, the way that that sort of evolves into in this world that we are in with things like separate allocator pathways is we can have a smart contract that can act as a meta allocator. And so what that means is that we can sort of delegate different governance teams to review. And uh, uh, instead of all of that rolling up to a single uh, evaluation at root holders and the, and the single governance team, we can have a proposed uh, sort of contract that has data cap and then divvies out that 
data cap to individual allocator pathways. And the team managing that smart contract can decide uh, what uh, re-up criteria look like for those individual pathways managed within the smart contract. So I, the, the basic thought here, right, is you've got um, one contract. That contract can get a data cap uh, allowance um, in um, F80. Uh, and then what it holds is a ledger uh, internally of which addresses actually have different slices of that overall allowance to give out as data cap. And so you can then see that you can have that meta allocator uh, ask for uh, relatively large amounts um, and less frequent amounts of data cap allowance from root key holders, uh, but have the same type of process of uh, small initial sub allocations uh, that grow over time to the individual allocator pathways that it manages. Um, we're hoping to um, get a security audit and get this deployed um, as what we propose for our next re-up uh, as uh, the fiddle pathways so that we can demonstrate this working um, for ourselves. Um, and then uh, as we get into rolling allocations, um, we'll propose that, um, I, 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 that, that we can act as a meta allocator um, for those who want to opt in to have us uh, do that evaluation. Uh, and the thought is you'll be able to see that there's a you know, relatively stable uh, back reserve of data cap allowance for that smart contract. And it allows us to then compete on uh, it, offering an SLA of being able to do those refreshes uh, faster um, so that rather than relying uh, on uh, the governance team's SLA, you can rely on ours. And so by, by offering that ability to do competition, we can um, push ourselves to, to get to um, better uh, quality of data cap and, and reduce that concern around data cap uh, consistency and availability. So that's the first one. Um, I, I think this, this is really about uh, continuing to move in the direction of the tree, um, but we're optimistic that there's uh, a bunch of other contracts that are possible here that can help automate other parts of the, um, the flow of data cap. So um, you can imagine that um, instead of uh, data cap directly going to a client, you could offer a client um, data cap via smart contract flows that check constraints, but then are able to auto refill. Um, so that, that's the direction that we're starting to prototype and iterate in. Um, I think we've got some more of those ideas that we've contributed in our brainstorming uh, to the um, request for allocators that is forthcoming. Thanks. Will, looking forward to that. Super looking forward to that. As far as the topic on data cap refresh, so many of the manual allocators that are coming through now have received their five petabytes of initial data cap and have been issuing it. So thank you and props to those of you that have been putting it out. And we're now getting to the point where those manual allocators are looking for a refresh of that data cap to come back. So to keep you updated on how this process will work, the initial five petabytes was set up to kind of give you a chance to allocate in a way that had constraints where we could look at the distributions that were made, check the diligence. So when it comes time to refresh, what you're going to be following are steps for a refresh ticket. When you'll submit this ticket, what we're going to be asking you is pretty much, where did you make your deals? How did those deals comply with how you spelled that out in your allocator platform? And then is this application in line with how you said you're going to be running your business? If that data cap is not distributed in a way, we're going to let you know in that application for a refresh, like, hey, you said you would have these copies, you have this many. We said that we see this weekly allocation and we didn't. So that'll either slow you down or that will make sure that you're not able to refresh on that data cap. So as a reminder on this, it's really important that any allocator understands their responsibilities as they're going forward and serving in this. And this really applies to the manual allocators that are doing this distribution. It's so that that verification of data cap should be happening at the client level. So you're looking at that data cap, you're making sure that it's a good request, you're doing the diligence with them to get the information. Then you're secondly, ensuring that the deal making is happening according to schedule. So it's not just going out in two terabytes, two petabytes all at once. You're keeping an eye on it and making sure that that flows. And if you're seeing any kind of complications or you need help or you need support, you're flagging that for Galen and myself on the governance team to make sure that we can unblock you or remove it. 
A good example is when we first allocated the data cap, there was an issue where the weekly allocation schedule was not set. So it would just go right out there. So three allocators flagged this, made issues and said, hey, I've seen this weekly allocation schedule wasn't in line. Perfect. Those are the kind of things that you should be keeping an eye on as the manual allocators. And as Will kind of mentioned, with smart contracts, we should see a lot of improvements to this process as we keep going. But to kind of put a pin for those allocators that are reaching the end of their five petabytes and getting ready for a refresh, thank you. We'll be following up with those of you that have filed those to make sure we get what we need and set you up for success in the next round. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And the best place to reach out would be in the allocator Slack channel for private questions like this. So with that, let's take a look at what the great Fiddle team is working on as far as tooling. So KZ, I'll turn it over to you, bud. Sure, thanks KRA. Hi everyone. Um, as always, I, I have been sharing updates weekly, generally on Monday or Tuesday morning, um, just highlighting any changes or enhancements that have been made to the tooling the allocators are using, specifically allocator.tech and or GitHub associated tooling. Um, this week, we we had a few updates related to allocator.tech. So I'll quickly go through those um, based on the screenshots you can see here. So the first one is as you log into allocator.tech on the home screen, you can view all allocators, all projects in progress. And you can now see that they're broken out with a, with a blue row subtitle with the name of each allocator. So it, it, if you'd like, you can scroll through. It's a great way to kind of get a sense of what's going on in the community. You can scroll through and see what other allocators uh, projects they're working on. Um, and on the left, there's an issue number column. You can click on any of those issues and that'll take you directly to the GitHub application. So if you wanted to, you know, dig in a little further, do some due diligence on your own on what some of these allocators are up to, uh, feel free. But this is just another sort of enhancement to, to the UX there. The second update is there's now a re renew cache button available. Um, so Kay Ray, if you go back to that screen, click on, well, actually, I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but it, for any of the applications that have a pending reviewer, um, you can click on it and it, it'll it it'll show you, there's a button at the top. I have a screenshot here. So if, if you've made any changes in an application in GitHub, uh, because that process can take, it's a bit delayed. If you make a change to a PR or an issue, you will not see that instantaneously on allocator.tech. There's now a button at the top that you can click um, renew cache and that should update your view so that you can see the most up-to-date information about an application. It's just a way for you to sync everything um, almost instantaneously there. Quick fix there. And then the third one, we added some new buttons. Uh, when you are reviewing an application, a, a new application, and you click on the detail tab, you'll see two new buttons at the bottom of the screen. One is um, decline. <clears throat> and one is a new comment button. So this just, essentially it saves you time from having to go into GitHub, the application, clicking on the comments at the bottom and adding something. You can essentially go to this, these links at the bottom of the screen, uh, either add a comment to a client about their application, or if you find the application doesn't meet, you know, the expectations of your allocator pathway, you can click the decline button and that will, that will remove the application from your view and will add a, um, closure to the PR within GitHub. So just some additional features for you to play with now within the allocator.tech view that you have. That's it for me, Kerry. Thanks. Well done. Looking forward to that. We had two questions that have come up. So as far as FAQs, thank you. Just as a quick refresh for anybody who might not have seen, there's an allocator registry issue template. This is so helpful versus DMs. DMs might go to KZ, myself, Galen, Will, and then we'll have to coordinate. If you make this issue, it makes it really fast for us to see it, respond, and then put this on our queue for getting you proper support. So 
The two of the wings that we've seen come through were adjustments to the schedules. This should be all wrapped up. If you have any ongoing issues, please let us know. And the second question came through in chat. And this was essentially, can I switch my DDO, my direct data onboarding? So to give you a TLDR, you're not prevented from using this DDO. So the tool has been set up. We had this post that went out. Just wanted to kind of circle back on this one. I think that the people on this call are not impacted. I might be wrong, James. I think this was one of the questions that might've applied to you guys as well. So as the tooling catches up, you'll be able to retroactively backfill that identification issues. But to kind of come back, no, you're not prevented from using DDO. I'll kind of pause to see if anybody has any follow-ups on this topic. All right. And then lastly, we got the question, I think this came from Fat Man on the April 13th call, and it was about, hey, what's going on with Slingshot? So we did some posts to find out, hey, what is the status? And essentially, the latest update that we've had is Slingshot V3 is currently on pause for the foreseeable future. So the data that has been prepped will not be onboarded. There's been no updates since then. But to kind of give you a once over the world, right now, it looks like the slingshot is on pause. There's been no updates on when the V3 data will be updated, or they'll be moving to a V4 going forward. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, or there's always a Slack channel on Slingshot if you're looking for more information on what that program is up to. So with that, we'll turn the floor over to you. Anything on your mind that you wish to ask, discuss, or flag with the teams? Well, all right. Thank you so much for your time. The next call will be happening at 0200 UTC this evening, this morning, depending on your time zone. Thank you again for all your contributions to the network. Looking forward to great things. Cheers, everyone.